Hi, my name is Marty and I am here to teach you about Independence Day. Today's book is called Hooray for Liberty, Charlie Brown, one of our favorite characters. And we're going to find out what happens in Charlie Brown's life. Now this is talking about Hooray for Liberty. And we have a big summer holiday coming up. Most people call it the 4th of July, but that doesn't really mean anything because there's the 4th of May and a 4th of December. I'll tell you why they call it 4th of July, but the real name of the holiday is Independence Day. It is also America's birthday. Now, if we go back more than 250 years, a long time ago, Bethlehem, Allentown, Easton were not the big cities that they are now. They were villages and small towns and they were in part of what we know as United States but it was all on the eastern part because they haven't explored out west yet. And so the other thing about this is that this was not the United States of America yet. These were colonies that were owned by the country of England. Now England, if you look at it on a map, is a much smaller country than the United States is, but it's a much older country and they had big cities and lots and lots of people and we didn't have very many people here yet. Well, England had a king named George and George loved to fight in wars and he was fighting a war with the country of France for a lot of years and he spent a lot of money on this war and didn't win yet or didn't lose yet either. But he decided he was going to come over to the colonies in America and get money from them, the people, because he needed more money to fight his wars. So he did all kinds of things. He put taxes on everything. He wanted people to pay. Anything you did, you had to pay money to support the King of England and his wars. Well, the colonists did not like that, the people who lived here. They were not happy about that at all. And they did things like had riots and demonstrations and wrote letters to the king. And at one point, one of the most valuable things in America was tea, believe it or not. It was very expensive because it had to come from India and China. So it was very expensive to get, and there were British ships in the Boston Harbor, and some of the local people dressed up like Indians and went on board these ships and threw all these crates and boxes and piles of tea overboard into the harbor, and that was called the Boston Tea Party. Well, the colonists got tired of paying all this money so they got together a group of very smart men and tried to figure out what to do with it. And the end result was they declared that we were going to be free from England forevermore. And so they wrote what we call the Declaration of Independence and it was approved on July 4th of 1776. And that's why we celebrate the July 4th holiday, also Independence Day and also America's birthday on that day. Let's read our book. This is called Hooray for Liberty, Charlie Brown. And we love the Charlie Brown people, don't we? Well, oh, we've got to come up with something fun to do, Charlie Brown announced. Hey, everybody, I've got an idea. Let's build a clubhouse, Lucy announced. 
I'll be the supervisor. Supervisor, Sally asked. Okay, I'll go get a hammer, Franklin said. And I'll get some nails, Charlie Brown said. And soon, no time, everybody was busy. Drawing plans, gathering tools, collecting the boards. Everybody except Lucy, that is. She was supervising. See Lucy here in her easy chair with her lemonade? Uh-huh, she's just watching everybody work. Careful of that board, Patty, she barked from her chair. Franklin, Charlie Brown needs more nails. Snoopy, bring me some more lemonade. Ouch! Hit the nail, not your thumb, blockhead, Lucy scolded Charlie Brown. Hey, Sally, you missed a spot where you're painting. Boy, Lucy's just lazy, isn't she? And bossy. Who does Lucy think she is? The queen of the clubhouse, Marcy said. Lucy perked up. Ooh, <laughs> did someone say queen? I like that idea. After they finished, Franklin declared, this is the world's best clubhouse. Good job, team. Our next job is lunch, Linus said. We'll come back afterward to play in it. When they return, Linus yelled up to Lucy. Hey, Lucy, can you toss us down the ladder so we can come up? No, I will not, said Lucy who was now wearing a crown on top of her head. I have decided to be queen of this clubhouse and you must pay me if you want to play up here. Five cents each, please. Schroeder, do you want to come up and be my king? No charge for kings. Wait a minute. We built this clubhouse together, Franklin said. It belongs to all of us. You can't do this. Too bad. Kings and queens get to do whatever they want, Lucy said. Oh, Schroeder, are you coming up? This is an outrage, Lucy Van Pelt, Marcy huffed. Good grief, Charlie Brown said. Linus said, Huh, you know what this reminds me of, he said. The people who lived in America during colonial times, we studied them in school. He said the English king ruled the American colonies back then, and he wanted them to pay lots of taxes because he said he protected them. Huh. But he kept adding more rules and more taxes what did the colonists do, asked Sally. Linus said the colonists became very unhappy, so they protested. They told the king they refused to pay money when they didn't have a voice. No taxation without representation was their motto. No taxation without representation. Hey, that's what Lucy is doing to us, Sally said. Hmm, we should all have a say in how we run our own clubhouse. She can't tell us what to do, Franklin protested. She's not the queen of us, Marcy added. Hmm, how did they get the king to stop? Peppermint Patty asked. The colonists just said no. We've had enough, Linus explained. They wrote a declaration, the Declaration of Independence. They declared that they would not pay money to England unless they had a say in the decisions being made in America. They decided they didn't want a king at all. Ha! That's what we're going to do, Charlie Brown said. We are going to write down the rules for our club. 
and tell Lucy she can't tell us what to do, yelled Patty. And the biggest rule is nobody has to pay to play in the clubhouse that we built together. And they all cheered. Back at the clubhouse, Lucy sipped her tea all alone. It's kind of lonely being queen, Lucy sighed. All of a sudden, Lucy heard noises from down below. Lucy, we demand that you hear us, the gang shouted. Charlie Brown threw their declaration into the clubhouse window. Our clubhouse is free, and so are we. Liberty for all, liberty from Lucy, they chanted. And here's Lucy reading their declaration. Lucy dropped the ladder down. <sighs> Come on up, everyone. I guess you're right. This clubhouse belongs to all of us, and nobody has to pay to play in it. Lucy also said, everyone will have a say and a voice from now on. Even you, Charlie Brown, she added, freedom and liberty for all. Hooray for liberty! The end. Now we're going to do a craft related to Independence Day and the summer celebrations that we all enjoy so much. If you think about what goes on on Independence Day, the 4th of July, one of the first things that comes to mind is parades. And we couldn't have Independence Day without fireworks, right? There's probably picnics and other things going on. So we're going to celebrate that and make a collage or a picture of something that you like about Independence Day. Now I brought a piece of fancy cardboard here that has sparkles around the edges. You can use plain paper. You can use fabric if you want to. And I used some felt for one of my projects here. So one of the things that I like about summertime and Independence Day is going swimming. Don't you like that? So I'm going to take a piece of paper here and I'm going to cut it so that it's kind of oh, a little bit hilly, if you will. That'll be like the sand at the seashore. And I'm going to glue that onto my cardboard if I can get my glue open. <clears throat> So we have this at the bottom like it's the seashore. Now, one thing that we want to incorporate in our Independence Day pictures is a symbol or two of Independence Day. And I have this tablet that came um, in the mail one time, I think, and it has a picture of a flag on it. So I love to see the flags flying at the beaches. Um, you see flags and kites because there's always a good breeze at the beach. So I'm going to put this on a flagpole and then put the flagpole in the sand. So I will draw my flagpole. Oops, got two at once, two for the price of one. So here's the flag flying at the beach. And now some other things we like about summertime and the beach is some fireworks. So we can draw fireworks on. You know how fireworks go up and then they come out and they kind of spread out. So that's what I'm drawing here, and I will show you. So I started the fireworks, and then I have some 
charcoal pens. I'm just going to add even more to the fireworks. So we'll get a couple of these out. Ooh, I like purple. So they're glittery, and that's what fireworks are, aren't they? So I put some of that on to make it extra sparkly. Might be hard to see on the camera, but if it, you were here in the room with it, you would see it. I better put some more glue down here. Okay. Now, how did I get to the beach, I wonder? I think maybe I rode my bicycle, so I'm gonna make a bicycle on the beach. Do that. I'm not a very good drawer, but it doesn't matter because you don't have to be perfect. Okay, so I drove, drew a bicycle on the beach because that's how I decided I got to the beach today. It's good exercise. And I think I'm going to draw a picnic basket. I need a better marker, don't I? A picnic basket over here because I always get hungry at the beach. And so I want to have some sandwiches and something cold to drink. So I'll put that there. And then what do you always need at the beach? You need a beach blanket or a beach towel. So let's put one of those there. Like that. So this was a real quickie picture. You can do lots of things on here. If you want to draw a picture of you in your swimming pool in your backyard, if you have one, maybe you want to draw a picture of you going to a parade or being in a parade or watching a parade, um, you can do that. You can draw anything you want to. I like to make sure that we're celebrating Independence Day though with our flag. Now, I also made another picture I took more time on that one. I had some material. It's just flannel that was in my sewing project stuff. And I didn't buy anything new for this because it was all made of scrap material. So let me tell you all about this. <clears throat> this is a wall hanging. It's a collage. It has a lot of things going on on it and I'll describe the things that I use. This material is just felt and it's real easy to fold over the top of your felt or material if you have it and sew straight across so that you can put a stick through it. And it doesn't have to be a dowel rod like this. It could be a stick that's kind of straight that you found on a walk and you could put that through it to hang up. Now, moms and dads, this is a really easy first sewing project that can be incorporated in this craft. Even younger children, like age three, I started sewing at age three with very simple things. They like big fat needles so that they can hold on to them good, and they, you can show them how they just go in and out, in and out, all the way across, and make sure that their knots on each end are secure. You can use contrasting thread or matching thread. So I had this piece of felt. <clears throat> I had the stick through it. I cut out these stars from a piece of material that I had and just glued those on. Didn't buy anything new for that. And then the rest of this, believe it or not, is made out of old greeting cards. Now, this picture here with the kitties looking out the window at the fireworks, huh, that was a Christmas card and they were actually looking out the window. Behind this U is Santa and his sleigh. So if you look real close, you can see one of the reindeer there. But this was, I thought, oh, they'll be looking out the window. It's nighttime. They can see the fireworks. So it'll be really neat. So I put stars in the sky, and then this part with the squigglies on it kind of reminded me what fireworks do sometimes. They go up and get all squiggly in the air and 
I move around, sometimes they make a little smoke cloud. And that was reindeer's antlers on a fancy sparkly card that they just went crazy with drawing. So I just cut that out and glued that on. And then I thought, oh, I want to put USA on it, but I don't have any red letters. I have pink ones, and I have blue ones, and I don't have anything red. Well, guess what? I turned this Christmas card over, and on the back side of it, it had this red material here, this fancy cardboard it is. So I traced my pink letters on here and cut them out and that got to say USA in red. So I'm having patriotic decoration here. And this is the greeting card I cut up. You can see some of the writing that's on the inside. And then I had a sparkly gold one, so I got some little gold stars that I cut out of that and glued those on. And then I took some of that sparkly um, pens again and just kind of made the, the fireworky things. And then how cool is this little ball string here? I found this at a secondhand store or maybe a yard sale, I don't know. So that's what I used instead of plain string, but you can use yarn, string, whatever you want. And you can hang this on your front door, in your room, in your bedroom. You can give it as a gift to somebody. I'm going to show you one more craft. It's so easy and it's so fast. So I have, <clears throat> I have, these pipe cleaners that are sparkly in different colors, come in different colors. So let's pick a couple of them out. And they're too long for what we want to do with it. So I have these super strong kitchen shears. Now you don't want to use anyone's good scissors for these. Always ask before you use something to cut or get a grown up to do it for you. So I'm just going to cut them down a little bit. We don't need this much. What do we think we're making with this? Cat's whiskers? Nope, we're gonna make fireworks ring. So all you have to do is, it, this works best if you can borrow someone else's finger. I'm a little bit experienced, so I can do this, but so you, you put it on like you're gonna wear a ring and then you twist the little ends so that it looks like a fireworks explosion. You can make these all day long. They're so easy. You can make one for you, your friends, your brothers and sisters, whoever you want to. But there's so much fun. Now, let's talk about these flags that we have here. The flags are a very big part of your Independence Day celebration. Back when the country was just starting and they had um, gotten the Declaration of Independence. George Washington, you know who he is? He was our number one president, our very first president. Well, before that, he was a general who fought the British and was one of the winning generals to have America be victorious and win against the, general, uh, the British. But he went to a lady in Philadelphia named Betsy Ross and asked her to make a flag for his army and it looked a little bit different than what we're used to. This is called the Betsy Ross flag. Now it's not a hundred percent that we know that Betsy Ross made this but what we do know is Betsy Ross made a lot of flags for George Washington for all the different divisions of the army and so on. So it stands to reason that he went to her for this too. But it has 13 stars for the 13 colonies and also 13 stripes for the 13 colonies. So it's a little different than what we use now. But our flags now have 50 stars because there are 50 states now. And the American flag is the symbol of America's birthday and you should always respect it. If you are at a parade 
and here comes a band or maybe um, a military unit and they're carrying the big flag, the great big flag in a color guard. Boys, you should always take off your caps if you're wearing one and put it over your heart. And if you're not wearing a cap, if, whether you're a boy or girl, you should uh, put your hand over your heart like you're saying the Pledge of Allegiance while the flag goes by. Now, if they're little bitty flags that somebody's carrying and just waving, you don't have to do that. But it's a sign of respect and it recognizes independence, that we are a free and independent country. And I want to thank some special friends because when they heard I was going to do Cops and Kids Reading Room program for Independence Day, this company over in Easton, Kaplan's, gave me enough flags for everyone who comes to this program in person. So I want to thank Kaplan's for donating the flags that we need for our Independence Day program. And so, remember, it's not just the 4th of July. It is Independence Day, and it is America's birthday, and boy, oh boy, what a great reason to celebrate. I'm Marty, and I have been your host for Hooray for Liberty. Thank you for coming. Thank you.